Good morning, Amelia Baptist Church, Facebook, Instagram, all of you who are joining us. Uh, great to be with you on this Friday. Great to be with you for the final installment of our devotion in First uh, in Peter. Uh, so we've had an awesome time looking at how God is working, how God has called us to live as exiles and as uh, foreigners in a land that is not our home, waiting for the day when our hope will be realized and everything that's wrong will be made right. Join me, if you would, today in 1 Peter chapter 5. We're going to begin in verse 6 this morning. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that He may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your cares on Him because He cares about you. Be sober-minded, be alert. Your adversary, the devil, is prowling, prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for anyone he can devour. Resist him Firm in the faith, knowing that the same kind of sufferings are being experienced by your fellow believers throughout the world. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, establish, strengthen, and support you after you have suffered for a little while. To him be dominion forever. Amen. Through Silvanus, the faithful brother, as I consider him, I have written to you briefly in order to encourage you and to testify that this is the true grace of God. Stand firm in it. She who is in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends you greetings, as does Mark, my son. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. Really, Peter's conclusion here is, is typical in many ways, but it provides us an incredible summary of, of the book. Uh, we ended yesterday talking about humbling ourselves, but Peter once again reiterates this point. Humble yourself under the hand of God so that he may exalt you at the proper time. We humble ourselves in service. We humble ourselves in suffering. We humble ourselves in leadership and in submission. Whatever position in life we find ourselves as husband, as wife, as child, as parent, as employer, employee, as government and citizen, we humble ourselves under God so that he might be the one that exalts us, so that he might be the one that vindicates us, so that he might be the one to give us a blessing for our goodness and punishment to those who do evil. In this humility, though, we're exhorted by, Paul, uh, by Peter to, to be vigilant, to be focused, to be ready, casting all of our cares on the Lord. We are to be sober-minded and alert. Why? This is sober-minded and as in focus, not letting any anything distract this could be talking about drugs or alcohol or anxiety or depression or distraction anything that would pull our focus away from God be sober minded and alert on the lookout in preparation living a life ready because we know that Satan is prowling around like a roaring lion seeking to devour and destroy us now Peter has talked about suffering he's talked about temptation uh, in this letter, and now he tells us that the devil is the one who's looking for a way to trap us. He's looking for a way to bring us down. And he'll use us. He'll use our weaknesses. He knows what's hard for us. He knows where we'll fall. He knows where we have difficulty, and he's waiting to attack and to take over with those things. So Peter says, be ready. Don't let anything else, don't let the worries of this life don't let your, your ideologies or your preferences, don't let your relationships or your anxieties, don't let anything take your focus off of God's plan and faithfulness to serving God. Focus on God is what will protect us from the attacks of the enemy. Keep your eyes on Him. Which flows immediately into verses 10 and 11, where, where Peter gives what we could call a doxology, a praise to God. He says, The God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, establish, strengthen, and support you after you have suffered a little while. To him be dominion forever. Amen. In praising God, Peter encourages you and me that God will have victory that God will support us, that God will not leave us in the difficult situations that we find ourselves, but God is the one who holds us up. And then finally, Peter reminds us of the Christian community that we live in. He reminds us of those uh, Silvanus who carries the letter for Paul, who delivers the message as an encouragement and to testify of the true grace of God. He says, stand firm 
as a faithful brother, as Silvanus does, as I have, in the grace of God that strengthens you. Now, verse 13, Peter writes, She who is in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends you greetings, as does Mark, my son. It, there's, there's a number of theories about who this Babylon is. I'm going to tell you, I believe that Peter is saying that the church who is in exile, looking back to the history of, of God's people, the Jewish people in exile in Babylon, uh, being influenced by outside cultures, being dominated by outside excuse me, outside cultures, Peter is saying the church of Jesus Christ who's in Babylon, in exile, with pressures from a pagan government who's been chosen by God along with you, sends greetings. He doesn't tell us specifically which church. He might be talking about the church in Rome. We know that, that Mark spent time in Rome. We know that Peter most likely died in Rome and, and ministered there. So uh, generally it's taken, I, I think it means that, that Peter is writing from the city of Rome but using Babylon as kind of a code word so that it can't be traced back to a specific or particular group of Christians. He says, we greet you. We stand with you. We are here to encourage you. As you suffer, we suffer as well. Finally, greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. The affection that bonds us together as God's people should strengthen us to stand firm in our faith to experience the peace of God that comes through Christ Jesus. Let's follow Peter's exhortations here to live humble lives, looking out for the temptation of the enemy, glorifying God and trusting Him to resolve all difficulty and suffering, and standing as a community of faith, together, unified in Christ, unified in love, to carry out His mission as exiles and strangers in a foreign land. Heavenly Father, I come before you today. I pray that we could stand as the church that Peter encourages in this letter. That we could stand in the midst of suffering, temptation, and trial. In the midst of, of in many ways, an, an unfriendly world. A government that doesn't understand the change that the gospel brings. A people that does not understand why we're different. Help us to be unique and let us find hope in the reality, not for this life, but for eternal life with you. That you, God, will make all things right. That you, God, will correct all uh, problems when Christ returns. Help us to live in light of our salvation, that we might glorify you, that we might be faithful to you, and that a lost and dying world might see your love and hear the gospel that brings salvation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, thanks once again for joining us today. Uh, we will not be here on Saturday. Look forward to seeing you Sunday morning at 1045 for our worship service. Whether you can join us in person uh, on Facebook or on Instagram or after the fact on our webpage or on our YouTube page. I hope you have a blessed weekend. Remember uh, that we are taking up donations this Sunday at church. Uh, for a food pantry put together by Right Side Up Ministries and another church in uh, Moss Bluff. So you can bring food or baby supplies to the church Sunday, and we'll make sure that gets to those who need some assistance uh, from Hurricane Laura. Have a blessed weekend. I love you all. I'll see you on Sunday. Bye.